I brought you here today because Indiana Dunes National Park is a spectacular example of succession happening right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a journey from the beach and deeper inland so we can see succession occurring in front of us and observe the changes. Here at the beach, we began our succession hike. Here we see the first step of succession. Weathering due to wind and water has broken rock down into sand. Though you can't see it now, bacteria and lichens also help to further break down this raw material. But more importantly, as they live and die, they incorporate organic material into the soil. That's the first step of soil formation. This weathering and slow incorporation of organic material continues as the hike brings us further in and brings us to the Fordune area. Here we begin to see plant life. Sand grasses like this marum grass here are pioneer species. They are very hardy species that can withstand the consistent disruption here. They do two important things. Their super long roots stabilize the sand and stop it from moving around. As the plants die and decay, they continue to add more organic material into the soil. This marum grass here is evidence the soil quality is building in bulk and nutrients as this particular species of grass is not quite as hardy as other sand grasses. Even here, we're further helped along by the lichens and mosses which continue to break down more raw material contributing to the soil quality. We also begin to see an increase in animal species as many insects begin to colonize here. However, because we're still near the beach, this area sees consistent disturbances and will pretty much remain in this state. Moving farther along, we come to an area that is dominated by shrubs and small trees like this cottonwood. Here, the greater diversity of plant species create complex root systems that hold the soil in place even better than the grasses from the foredunes. Because there are more plants growing, there is even more organic material being incorporated into the soil. Because of all these plants, this community supports a greater amount of animal life. As the soil quality continues to build and more and more nutrients are available, we see a pine community develop. Because these trees grow larger and produce a lot of shade, many of the plants from the earlier community cannot compete here, and thus a pine community is established. Here we see trees with much more intense nutrient requirements, like these jack pines and spruces. Now we arrive at a much older community. This is an oak dominated forest, but we also see some smaller tree species here like basswood, dogwood, and witch hazel. All the leaf litter from these trees piles up every year and creates a deeper and richer layer of soil. And here we are, the Climax community at Indiana Dunes. The dominant species here are going to be maple and beech, but there is also black oak, which is a species of oak that is particularly efficient at using the resources here and appears to be the most common tree that I am surrounded by. This is a relatively stable community and will remain present here until some sort of massive disturbance. Climax communities such as this one are relatively resilient in the face of minor disturbances like extreme storms or floods. 
However, if an out of control fire were to sweep through this area, it would revert back to an earlier stage and secondary succession would begin. 